What is going on everybody? My name is Tyson. I am here in the Phoenix area, Scottsdale, Arizona to be specific. It's my last day here and hey, what better way to spend it than by checking out some awesome e-bikes. Today we are looking at the Rook. This is from Surface 604. If you're new to that brand, they're a Canadian company, been around since about 2013 and they make awesome product back. They've made some changes that are present on this model as well as on their other ones. For example, the, the controller is a lot easier to get to. It uses XT60 connectors now, and you can get to that controller and change it out in about 15 minutes if you're having trouble with it. That is fantastic. Some other changes that they've made that affect all their models is new batteries. These batteries are shorter, and they're using high quality Samsung cells, which they were doing before, but now they're standardized across their models. So this one will fit any of their other models. And you get two choices of capacity here. They're all 48 volt, and then you can go 14 amp hour, like we've got here, that's the upgraded size. And then the standard is 10.4 amp hour. So even the standard is pretty high capacity, and then you can bump that up even more. If you want this battery, that's $200 extra. When you buy the bike, the bike as it's the default for it, I should say, that starts at $19.99. A little bit more expensive than in previous years. It was, I think it was $17.99 last year, and then actually $18.99 the year before that. We reviewed this three years in a row. Price went up a little bit, but still pretty great in my opinion. So if you want that extra battery, that'd push you up to $21.99. They've also got an optional suspension seat post if you want that that's i think an extra 99 dollars to get a sun a sun tour suspension seat post on there great to have those options available at checkout the weight on this bike we're looking at 56.8 pounds when i just weighed it back in the shop of course there's a little bit extra for the high capacity battery i weighed that at 7.7 .7 pounds i'm not sure what the standard battery weighs but obviously that would shave off a little bit so we gained a little bit i think maybe a pound or so from last year's model not bad at all really and something unique about this bike the rook that it has had for a couple years is it uses a torque sensor for pedal assist now it's got a rear hub drive motor as you can see here geared motor in the back that's from Bafang. that's a 500 watt nominal 750 watt peak motor paired with a torque sensor so you get a lot more responsiveness out of that it's responsive in terms of how quick it responds to you pedaling and then also it will vary the level of assist so if you're pedaling light you get a little bit but if you're pedaling hard you get a lot of assist. So that makes it just a lot more easy to ride. It's a lot more fun to ride in my opinion. And you don't have that frustrating delay with a cadence sensor where sometimes you have to pedal a revolution or even two before it kicks in. And then you stop pedaling and it still keeps pushing you for a little bit until it realizes. So much more responsive on here. Awesome job with that. You know, they've, they've had a solid formula with the Rooks so far. It wasn't perfect, of course. There was the they made some really nice changes for the maintainability like we were talking about with the controller. They switched over to XT60 connectors and made it a lot easier to get to. So a, a dealer or just someone who knows what they're doing can get to that controller to replace it for in about 15 minutes. That is awesome. That helps out a lot. They do a good job with how they manage their cables on this bike as well. Nice and clean. We got the integrated uh, cabling here. And they also even integrated the cabling for the rear taillight. Spinninga lights integrated for both the taillight and the headlight. We'll look at that headlight in a minute, but you can see right under here, it runs into the frame for the rear rack to then connect with the other cables down there. Helps it to look even more neat and polished. The headlight up here, I'll let you get to take a look at that. That's the Kando Plus by Spinninga. Nice and bright. This does a great job of lighting up the road ahead of you as opposed to some lights that are more just so other people can see you. So solid performance there. I like that it also has the reflector down there for even when it's not on. And the suspension here, while we're up here, check this out. We've got the Suntour XCT suspension fork on the front. Bit of an upgrade from previous year's model. We got a whole 110 millimeters of travel where the other ones had 80 millimeters. And fully adjustable, of course, you can adjust the preload and then we've got lockout over there. So you can adjust that to fit you if you're maybe a bigger rider or you're carrying some extra weight and that's awesome really good job from those 28 millimeter steel stanchions on there and the brakes here since we're down here let's take a look at these so they're using the same brakes that they have before these are the tectro ariga i believe it's pronounced 
dual piston calipers. These are hydraulic disc brakes, so they're they're easier to actuate as opposed to mechanical brakes where you have to put a little bit more force on them and then also they need a bit more maintenance and tightening and stuff like that. You do have to still bleed these regularly, but that's easy to do for you or just for your you know, local bike shop to do that for you. The rotors here are an upgrade. We've moved up to 180 millimeters on the rotors for both the front and rear as opposed to the last two years where they were 160 millimeter rotors. So that's great. A little bit better stopping power on there, a little bit better heat management. That step up right there in terms of performance. We've got some stuff on this bike that has not changed from previous year's models. We're using the same black plastic fenders on here. Plastic has some benefits in being a little bit more durable than steel or aluminum. You know, the steel ones especially are a little bit more prone to getting dinged up or scratching and then rusting. Plastic, you don't have to worry about that. The downside of plastic is it can be a little bit more rattly and it can also get bent. Sometimes that'll happen if somebody leaves their bike pressed up against you at a bike rack or maybe it just gets bent in shipping or something like that. If you ever have that happen and you need to fix it, uh, for example, if they get bent down so they're touching the tire, you can actually just put a piece of foam or something under there to hold it up and leave it out in the sun and it will reshape pretty nicely. So if that ever happens to you, now you know how to fix it. We've got the rear rack, of course, which we've seen on all the models. This is a weld-mounted rear rack that helps to make it a little bit more stable. And the maximum weight on this, I didn't find a figure for it, but I think it's a pretty standard one, 25 kilograms, you know, around 52, 55 pounds for the max weight on the back there. Lots of options for you know, hanging panniers and strapping various things on. Lots of connectors there. I like to see that. Makes it a lot easier to transport various different sizes of cargo around. We've got the adjustable length kickstand back here, of course, and they've got it rear mounted. Love that because it makes it so you can pedal backwards and not have to worry about hitting the crank arm against the pedal, getting what's called pedal lock. So that's a plus for maneuverability. And the crank arms here, this is something that's different as well. We, we're still sticking with aluminum alloy, but they switched over to the Samox uh, crank arms here, 170 millimeter length, that's standard. They had Pro Max before. How much of a difference you're gonna notice on that, you know, it's, <laughs> that's tough to say, but uh, just a notable change for that. Still got the Welgo platform pedals here, aluminum alloy with rubber grips on the top and the reflectors on the sides, of course. These are really great for traction on them. They've got this nice rough uh, texture on the top of the rubber there that helps you to stick to it, even if they get wet, which is awesome. And taking a look at our tires here, we've got Kenda tires. We, we're sticking with the same ones as the last two years models. Kenda tires that are 26 by 2.1, so that's a little bit bigger on the diameter. That gives you a little bit more comfort on it. Pressure range on these is 40 to 65 PSI. Now, we don't have any reflective striping, as you can see on the sidewalls, and then there's also no puncture protection on these tires. Depending on where you live, you may want to get some slime sealant or the protective liners or something like that. You're here in Arizona, and also where I'm from in Colorado, that's pretty much a necessity if you're gonna be riding around is to have some puncture protection. So just be aware, you're gonna have to add that yourself if you want it. And we do get reflectors on the side that help out with the side visibility. Big safety thing there. The chain guard and we'll, we'll look at that in a minute when we get the bike turned around is actually reflective which is pretty cool something i do want to point out that's new on this year's model that was not advertised on their website is we got thicker spokes here i measured these at 11 gauge spokes and last year we had i think it was 13 gauge in the front and then 12 in the back so now we've got 11 gauge on both that's awesome. That's just a little bit more strength and stability, so I like to see that. They have made some changes to the geometry as well to get you a little bit lower of a standover height. I measured it at 18 inches there. Makes this bike very approachable, which is awesome. And it's just, it's adjustable too for different heights of riders. The seat post is not as long as it used to be. It used to be 300 millimeters and now it is down to 270. So if you're a tall rider like myself at six foot three, I was a little bummed by that. I liked to being able to, being able to raise the saddle up nice and high but you know I'm a lot taller than the average rider so for most of you that's not gonna matter the saddle here they've got a really nice saddle the Cell Royale this is a gel saddle nice and soft pretty wide gives you a lot of comfort and as I've mentioned you can get a optional upgrade when you buy the bike you can get that uh, I think it's a Sun Tour suspension seat post so even more comfort in the back that will really complement that suspension fork up in the front 
I've got things turned around here so we can check out the other side. This is that chain guard I was talking about. Plastic does a great job of covering everything. And look at this, this is reflective. Big safety thing that helps out for side visibility. You know, it only helps on this side of the bike, of course, but you know, I still appreciate that. That's awesome. It is just a chain guard, not a chain guide or a, a bash guard that keeps the chain from jumping off. So that is, there's, there's that risk that the chain can bounce off if you're taking big bumps or maybe jumping curbs. For a city bike like this, it's not as much of an issue except for the curb thing. So just be cautious about taking bumps really fast like that. And looking at the drivetrain here, this is a big upgrade. So we've got a Shimano Alivio group set for this bike. We're looking at nine speeds in the back here. I believe it was 12 to 34 teeth whereas last year it was 11 to 32. So it's, and in terms of the effective range, it's a bit similar, but then the, the first gear there bumping up to 34, that makes it so you can tackle steep hills a little bit easier. And Alivio is high quality stuff from Shimano. Last year we were looking at Altus, I believe it was, Shimano Altus, which is still all right. You know, you got Turney and then Altus, and I can never remember the order, but it's Alivio and Acera that are the next higher up tiers from Shimano awesome job there the shifting on it feels absolutely fantastic i've already been riding around a bit and we'll of course get out and do some more riding once we get to the ride test portion and moving on up towards the cockpit we've got the satori the the up to adjustable stem here it's basically the next and i think it's actually the up to plus let's see yep up to plus on that next generation for this adjustable stem similar to the one we saw last year on the rook this is an awesome stem because you can adjust this bike to fit just about any rider moving it forward up even back a little bit works well with the step over for really great approachability really the only downside of this particular setup is that it's not a hands-free or excuse me it's not a tool free adjustable you do need a tool to be able to adjust that stem it's still pretty easy to do you know you just need an allen wrench but we have seen it a couple of years ago they had the tool free one where you could just lift a lever so need a tool for this one and looking further around the cockpit here this is where we see some more changes from last year so the grips have changed here instead of being rubber we've got this uh like a faux leather stitched. Makes them a little bit softer, a little bit more comfortable. They feel really nice. They're not locking, unfortunately. So as you can see, you can, if you twist hard, you can turn them. For a city bike like this, that's not as much of an issue. You're not gonna be bearing down on these nearly as hard as you would on like say a mountain bike or something with a, a more forward riding style. This one's really upright, so it's easy to stay relaxed, but just bear in mind, those can turn. So if you find them twisting around a lot and that gets frustrating, you can get some locking grips to replace those. The control pad and the display have both changed for this year. This is the control pad right here on the left grip. You've got your up and down for changing your levels of assist. You've got a dedicated headlights button, eye or information used to change info readout on the screen or interact with the settings. Power button right here. And then of course your twist throttle. This is a or twist throttle, excuse me, your trigger throttle right here on the left hand grip. Variable throttle right here, so you can press it a little bit to get a little power, press it a lot to get a lot of power, of course. And we're going to walk through the controls and the display here. I'm gonna move the bike into the shade because this, this new display is really nice looking, 3.5 inch color LCD, you know, custom six, uh, Surface 604 on there, but it's not very bright. In the direct sunlight like we are now, it's just, it's kind of hard to see. So I'm gonna get this moved and then catch up with you guys in the shade. Okie dokie folks, we've moved over into the shade. So I'm gonna hold down on the power button here to fire up that display. Got the Surface 604 logo that pops up. And I'm gonna try to adjust the camera so you guys can see. In the shade right here, I can see it all right. The camera doesn't pick up as well. So if you can't see it, I do apologize. But we've got a nice color display here. You get your speed readout right in the center. And then the motor power would essentially be the motor wattage will show along the bottom. There's a bar that, or a, yeah, a bar that goes along this way in dark green. And then up in the top here, we've got a battery percentage. Love that, it's nice and precise. For some reference, if you aren't familiar with the earlier generations of this bike, they had a monochrome LCD screen. We only got five bars for battery, which gets the job done, of course, not nearly as precise, so nice upgrade there. We can see our trip distance and our odometer right here, as well as our assist level. It'll change, can go from all the way down to zero up to five. 
Something that Surface 604 has done that's different with these controls too is you get full throttle regardless of the assist level. Even if you're down in level zero, you can still hit that throttle and get full power. I like that, I think that's awesome because sometimes I like to ride it like a normal bike and then use the throttle every now and then. Be aware of that even if you're at level zero and you hit that throttle though, the bike can take off. So if you are you know, moving the bike around in your garage or something like that, you just got home and it's still powered on, might wanna turn it off or just be real careful that you don't hit that throttle on accident. We do get a walk mode. You can hold down the minus button and that will engage the walk. Oh, let me actually hit it correctly. There it goes. That will engage walk mode. Awesome if you need to walk the bike for any reason. Maybe you're walking with a friend or you have too many things to carry. It might not happen on this bike because you got the rear rack, but that'll that's still an edge case. Now you can change the readouts on here. You can press information and we can get over here to see our max speed. And we can see our average speed and the time or timer, I should say, and then we'll go back to odometer there. Now you've got a light button right here, so you can turn on the lights. You hit that, look at that, dims the display, turns on the front headlight there and the rear light. The spinning, spinning the lights are awesome. I really appreciate those. I'm gonna hit that to bring it back up to the brighter setting. Now we've got an optical sensor right down here. So if you are riding at night, then the screen will automatically dim and the lights will automatically turn on. So that's a nice feature. You don't even have to worry about it. And if you wanna get into check out the settings on here, you can hold down the up and down at the same time. And so and then we get in here, we've got display settings. You can hit the eye to go into that toggle unit so you can change the brightness we're already at 100 percent i was hoping i could crank that up a bit to make it easier to see dormancy for the that's what the timeout setting so that's when the bike will turn off if nothing is going on with it this is another new thing right here password you can put a password on the bike and then you have to use the password of course when you fire it up to be able to write it that is a great theft deterrent and helps to discourage people from trying to turn it on and just take off with it that is a nice thing that they've added there. Okay, we're gonna go back out. And there is a lot more stuff in here, advanced settings, you can change your wheel size. So if you swap out your wheels for something else, you can tweak that. You can change the speed limit right here. This one's raised up to 32 miles per hour, but it doesn't seem to actually effectively raise the speed. I was still only able to hit 20. This bike is a class two. It is maximum speed of up to 20 miles per hour, and you have the option of using your pedal assist or your throttle to get there. So be aware of the regulations where you live for how you can ride it. All right, so I think that about does it for the display. So we're going to continue on with the cockpit. We mentioned the grips here. You can get a look at the levers here for these Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. Those are the Tektro Arigas. Three finger levers here, very easy to actuate, especially because of the hydraulic nature. That helps out a lot. Okay, we've moved back out into the sunlight, get you a little bit better visibility. A couple more things we can point out on the display here. It is a fixed display. You can, of course, you know, rotate it up and down here to better position it to reduce glare. And check this out. They've added a USB charging port on the side of the display here. And so this port right here, this is a 0.5 amp. And that's important for the type of device that you're trying to charge. If you've got an iPhone like I do, those require at least a full amp for charging. So it's not going to charge your iPhone, but it will charge an Android phone. And there's quite a few other little electronic things that it is able to charge. If you've got an iPhone, while we're talking about it, you've got a charging port on the battery right down here on the right side. This one is a one amp USB port. So you can plug in your iPhone there. If you do that, you might wanna get a right angle USB port just so that it helps the cord to run up here. You know, maybe you got your phone mounted up there so it doesn't get hit while you're riding it. I like having that on the battery because you can pop the battery off. Let's say you're at a picnic or something like that. You need some extra juice. You can just pop the battery out, bring it over with you. Love that. Uh, moving right on back up to the cockpit. Uh, okay, so we talked about how we got the USB charging port there. We've looked at these grips. We get a flick bell here on the left hand grip. It's a little bit difficult to reach and you know, there's only so much you can do with that. We're getting crowded up here. For me, I have pretty big hands and I can't reach it comfortably. I have to kind of move my hand over here. So just be aware of that. You know, like I said, there's limited real estate up here and they got to put it somewhere. We've got the shifters right here. These are those Shimano Alivio shifters. And we got the gearing readout window, makes it easy to see what gear you're in for that nine speed there. You've got the 
trigger shifters here. The lower shifter is for shifting down gears. You can dump up to three down at once with a pull trigger shifter up here to go up one at a time. These are those brake levers. These were the Tektro Arigas. Three fingers on these brake levers. They're super easy to actuate, and that's thanks to them being hydraulic disc brakes, of course. Solid performance out of those. I've got things moved around again so we can check out the battery and take a look at how that works. Something to point out on the battery before we remove it, charging port is right down here on the bottom left side. Pop that uh, cover off of there. We got the nice rubber cover on a leash so you're not going to lose it. But this is a bit of a downside, the position of it, it is right next to that left crank arm, which means this can hit that pretty easily. So if you've got the bike plugged in and charging, just be careful that you don't move it around and accidentally bump that with the crank arm. You really don't want to damage your charger or even worse, your battery charging port. Just be careful about that. Now, if you want to check the battery charge when it's on the bike, you can press this button right here. It's gonna be hard to see in the daylight, but we've got LEDs right here that show the charge level. And then to remove it, I have got the key here and I think I'm going to have to put the camera down to do this with two hands because you've got to, um, it's a, it's got a spring in there to keep it locked. And so you have to hold it down here and then this lever pulls, or excuse me, this handle is used to pull the battery out and it slides out to the side. So I'm gonna catch back up to you guys once we've got it out. All right guys, got the battery removed. 14 amp hour, 720 watt hour as you see there. Remember this is the extended capacity battery pack. And we have got high quality Samsung cells in here. You can see that USB charging port and then the connection point where it connects back onto the bike. And the handle is nice too, because that just makes it easier to carry. You know, if, if you need to carry it around, you can just grab it like that. I really appreciate that on there. And as I mentioned, this is a new battery pack for them for Service 604. It's shorter and it's also standardized across their different models so that you can use this on all of them. We are getting pretty close to having talked about everything on here. We've got a couple more things I wanna point out. One of those is that we don't have a slap guard on this chain stay here. Now, they got away with that in on the previous models because the wiring right here for the derailleur and the motor actually ran on the top of the chain stay. And so it also served as a slap guard. And a slap guard, if you don't know what that is, that's what protects the chain stay here from getting hit by the chain if you go over bumps and stuff like that. Now fortunately this is, there's a re really nice low tech solution for this. You just put some tape on that chain stay and then that'll be fine. There's also all kinds of aftermarket slap guards that you can put on there that might fit a little bit better. I like tape because then it lets you still see that branding there, which I think looks nice. But just be aware of that. Do something so that your chain doesn't scratch up this nice white paint right here. Speaking of the white paint, you get two color options here. This is the white, of course, and then there's also a black one that's mostly black, but it's got some white trim on it along the bottom of the down tube and I, f I forget where else it had some additional white on there. It might have still been the front fork. So the white, of course, is great for visibility. It's really easy to see, especially at night. I appreciate that. The black looks pretty stylish. One other thing that we can point out here that's a little bit of a downside is just the mounting point for the headlight. It's mounted on the lower part of the suspension fork, which means when you're going over bumps and this is compressing right here, then your headlight is going to bounce up and down. That can be a little bit jarring and might make it a little bit more difficult to see at night if it's a really bumpy road. Maybe not difficult to see, but just a little bit more annoying. You get a little bit of a, it's almost like a strobe light effect. So it's, it's not gonna be anything extreme. I just wanna point that out so that you guys are aware. And there are two frame sizes for this bike. This one right here is the medium slash large which is like a 19 inch frame and then they've got the small slash medium which is about a 17.5 inch so this one's what you're going to go for if you're a bit of a taller rider and on their website they say riders up to 6'6 can use it and i can see that you know i'm six foot three i've got the saddle raised about as high as it'll go i mentioned that it's a little bit shorter length of one which i was a little bit disappointed by it still is plenty high enough for me to ride. I'm not quite getting full leg extension, but good enough. The stem, just the whole setup up here in the cockpit is awesome. They've added a little bit more rise here. I think we only had one spacer on it for last year's model. So this can go up even higher. It's not even raised to the highest setting, but right there just feels great for me. I'm able to sit with a nice upright, very like cruiser feeling upright posture. And so that's great, really nice ride comfort. This is a fantastic bike for a city commuter for that purpose. They have a 
nice difference in height here too and the or excuse me in uh in rear rack positioning so look where it's at here it's far enough back that you can lower the seat down all the way without bashing it straight into the rear rack and you can put stuff on it without hitting the seat as much as some bikes there's some bikes that have a little bit of an issue with that especially with the bigger saddle like this so you can throw your stuff on the rear rack we've got that nice step through that makes it approachable especially if you've got stuff on the back you don't want to be trying to swing your leg over that so I like this bike a lot for that approachability and just adjustability. You can fit it to pretty much any rider height. Let's just jump on and do some riding so you guys can see it in action. Love that step through, so easy. And I'm going to take those keys out before I forget. Don't have to have the keys in to ride, of course. I had just forgotten them in there. I'm gonna fire up the display here. And so, I don't know if you guys can even see that. It is difficult for me to see. I can see the speed in the center. They've got a good contrast ratio from the back, black background and then the white numbers. So I can at least see it, but sometimes I have to shade it a little bit. You know, we've got some shade on it right now that's helping a little bit, but difficult to see. I would like to see some improvement in that area. To start out, we're just going to bump it up all the way into level five and just take off on the throttle. So we'll, we'll see how we do. Nice and smooth and pretty quiet back there from that motor. I'm impressed with it. And then there we are. We're all the way up to the top speed of about 20. We're going to do that same one again. Going down here, we'll use the throttle just so we get an even test here. Really hard to see that speed right in the middle there. But great acceleration. Check that out. And 18, 19, all the way up to 20 there. Hit the brakes. Such smooth performance from that motor. It's really quiet. I'm gonna switch over and do some pedaling now. And like I mentioned, the torque sensor really makes this bike fun to ride. I'm pedaling really slow right now. We'll shift down a little bit. I'm pedaling pretty slow right now and not putting a whole lot of pressure on the pedals. And so we're just not, you know, I'm, I don't really even feel the motor, maybe a tiny bit, but as soon as I start to give a little bit more, instant power, it's awesome. And then oh, as soon as I stop pedaling, that cuts off almost instantly as well. We're gonna turn back around here. And that's something that I really appreciate about the torque sensor because you can even get started without having to use the throttle, which on a cadence-based, uh, cadence-based pedal assist you have a little bit of a delay there so getting started can be tough especially if you're on a hill but with this bike it's the torque sensor so it just kicks in almost right away and there it goes whoa <laughs> nice big jolt of power there oh yeah feels great that's honestly one of my favorite things about the bike is having that torque sensor now i mentioned to you guys that the reach and this the seating position on here is really nice and I'm able to just sit upright, it feels great. I should have brought something so I could stick my backpack on the back rack and strap it down. But I love the upright seating position. Feels comfy, the grips are nice. There is some re reach issues just for your hands. I mentioned the flick bell, it's a ways over here so you have to reach for that a little bit. And then on the left side, you may have to reach your hand over a bit to interact with the buttons. Fortunately, the up and down are easy to get to. Those are the ones you're gonna be using while you're riding for the most part, since the lights are automatic, of course, and then that thumb throttle is very easy to reach without having to move your hand at all. There we go. I switched over to the frame mount. This way you guys can you know, see the derailleur in action. We got the nine speed, 12 to 34 tooth cassette on the back there. You can also hear the motor. I wanted to give you a chance to hear that in action, see what you think about it. And I'm gonna start off just in throttle, get things turned on here. We're gonna be starting up in the highest level of assist, level five. And I'm just going to use the throttle so you can listen to the motor back there.
And that was accelerating all the way up to the top speed, 20 miles per hour. So that's how loud it gets. You're pretty close to it there too. So when you're up a little bit higher riding the bike, it's pretty quiet, especially for a hub motor. I like that a lot. All right, we're gonna check out the derailleur here. Really nice performance. You know, it's that Shimano Alivio. Really does a solid job. Get you a, see if we can show you the torque sensor a bit here. I'm gonna bump up that assist level again. Lift up a little bit. So pedaling lightly here, not a whole lot. And then as soon as I start to push harder, get that instant power. Really phenomenal Alrighty friends, that about does it. Thanks for joining me while we've been checking out the 2020 edition of the Surface 604 Rook. Now, we've got the full review back at electricbikereview.com. That's the written write-up, pros, cons, all the specs, measurements, everything you could want, so check that out. We've also got the Surface 604 Forum. You can connect with other riders and dealers as well. We've got a few dealers that are on there. If you've got questions about this model or just have some thoughts on it, maybe you own one or wanna share your thoughts about the company, chime in in the comments section below or in the comments section back on the site and forum. All right, guys, you know the drill. Ride safe out there, and we will see you next time.